time you got here. All right, hallelujah. What is it this time? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I got grub cooked for 25 cow hands. Where's the cow hands? Or maybe me and you's driving them mossy back Texas critters all the way to Nevada by ourselves. I'm telling you right now, I quit. This is the third time today you feathered out, hallelujah. I got a reason to be feathered out. Grub for 25 hands and spoiling there in the kettle. No one to eat it. They're coming on behind. I've been up since then. All 25 of them? All 25 of them. Cartwrights, I don't know what you're thinking about, setting one man do all the cooking for a crowd like that. I've been up since daylight, cooking food, peeling potatoes, chalking the fire, chalking the fire. Drop a picket line here. Is that our hens? No, just the advance party. They sure are a scroungy-looking bunch, ain't they? Well, I didn't have much choice. Not too many want to take a herd the way we're going. Oh, Brazos! Hoss, this is our new Segundo. Brazos, my son Hoss. Hi. Brazos what? Brazos, that's all. Uh, Brazos rounded up our crew. He knows the country we'll be traveling. Where'd you round them up? Out of the nearest jail? Some of them, maybe. But driving cattle up the trail ain't exactly my idea of a church social. I want the hardest boys I can find. Well, it looks like you found them, mister. Uh, Brazos, uh, feed your man. We'll pull out at daybreak. Uh, Brazos. Let's not have any trouble. Trouble, Mr. Cartwright? You know, trouble only comes to those who can't handle it. wood gets water in the barrel. The tree's right down there. The creek just below the rise. You uh, driving a herd north? I want to put an idea like that in your head. We're just sashaying these critters up and down and down and up so they'll get an appetite for the vittles. Won't get too fat in the middle. Yeah. The tree's right down there. Well, who's the trail boss? Mr. Ben Cartwright. I declare you're nothing but questions. Here. The creek right there below the rise. Take about ten buckets to fill the barrel. Yes, sir. Uh, this here, Mr. Cartwright, is he uh, doing any hiring? Now, boy, I got a passel of hungry trail hands to feed. Now, you got no time to waste answering foolish questions. Yes, sir. Well, maybe you could put in a, a word for me. My name's Sam Jackson. You are the dangest, gabbiest fellow when there's work to be done. Maybe I'll put a word in for you, and maybe I won't. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Who's that? Who's young fella riding grub line? Seems to be a nice willing boy, too. Yeah. I see you done put him to work. Hallelujah. What do you got against cutting your own wood and hauling your own water? It ain't in keeping with my position. Mr. Horse, my job's driving mules and cooking, and I'll thank you to keep your big, fat, cow-smelly hands out of my donuts. My hands ain't neither cow-smelly. Well, if you want to eat, you go and help that boy get in some wood. Somebody got to hold me some water. Went to town to buy me some goods. I myself walked in a piece of wood. Hallelujah, you undoubtedly got the worst voice I ever heard in my life. Good enough for the mules. They like it. They probably think you're some kin. 
Axe ought not to be that heavy, kid. Ought to tuck you out like that. Don't you tell me nothing about axes. I've been swinging axes all my life. Hmm? How many of them did you ever swing on an empty stomach? Yeah. You go nowhere and sit down. Oh, hallelujah, you ought to know better than send a man out on a job like this on an empty stomach. You looking for work? I sure am. What can you do? Ride, rope, drive cow. All right? I can read and write and cipher up to the 12 times table. You can. And I know more about cows than any of them ragged tailed brush poppers you got in your drive. Well, that ain't saying a whole lot. Yeah. That ought to be plenty. We don't want to spoil old hallelujah. Come on, let's pick our meal, take it up, and get on back. Okay. Hallelujah, this ought to hold you for a while. When are you going to get the rest of it? <laughs> Got us a new hand, Paul. Looks like I might tug it out. Yeah, I reckon he ain't been feeding regular. Hey, kid, come here a minute. This is... Dang, I don't think I got your name. Uh, Sam Jackson. Sam? Sam's educated, Paul. He can read and write and cipher and keep a tally book the whole shooting match. Ah. You looking for a job, son? Well, yes, sir. I sure could use a job real handy. Hmm? Razos? Yes, sir. Sorry. Segundo. Brazos, this is uh, Sam Jackson. Put him to work and fix him up with a string. All right, Mr. Cartwright. This way, Sam, and I'll get you fixed up. Looks like a nice boy. Something wrong? No, no, Paul. I reckon everything's all right. Kid. Sam Jackson, huh? When did he let you out, or did you bust out? Now, look, Brussels, let's get this straight. You don't ask me no questions, and I won't cause you no trouble. Now, you look. Nobody's causing anybody any trouble. Now, you and I always had the same kind of ideas, kid. And we still have. I went to jail. You didn't. Fine. I had it with me ever since I left home. Where is home, Sam? Back a ways. Back a ways, which way? Uh, I'm from Nagadosis. So, fur piece. You don't sound much like a Texan. Well, I ain't to begin with. My mom moved down with the relatives after Pa died. Well, Sam, how come you happen to be on this trail? Well, uh, I thought I'd like to make something of myself. And there ain't much opportunity for that in a place like Nagadocious. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go check my horse. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. I like that boy. I said I like that boy. Yeah, I heard you, Paul. What's bothering you? I don't know for certain, Paul. There's something about that boy. I can't lay to exactly what it is. It's sort of the same thing I feel about the Colts every year at breaking time. They, they're a little uncertain and uneasy. And if you spook them the wrong way, they, they'll go bad on you every time.
Johnny. Same old Johnny. Smooth with the tongue, fast on the draw. The name's Sam Jackson. Take it easy, kid. We gotta make some plans. What I'm doing is personal, something I gotta take care of myself, and I don't want you spoiling it, you hear? Oh, I ain't gonna spoil it, Johnny, but I want in on it. I got whipped out of town by that Sheriff Logan. I still got the marks on my back. Man, don't forget that. I'm sorry, Brazos. I'm going it alone this time. <laughs> hit town with money, they're gonna raise more devilment in one night than you've seen in your whole life. Well, they'll treat that town like a possum. Hallelujah, would you tell me one thing? Sure. Why do folks name you Hallelujah instead of Jeremiah? Jeremiah. <laughs> Show him who's Jeremiah. Ain't you going to town with the rest of them border headings? If you want to spend the money, Mr. Hicks, I'm saving. What are you saving your money for, boy? Well, I, I want to make something of myself, and it seems a man needs money to do that. You know, I worry when I hear a young fella talking like that. I really do. Ain't natural. <laughs> well, I understand you aim to hold your herd here. Plan on letting your men go into town? Well, any law against it? My name's John Logan. I'm sheriff for Waycross Station. I suggest you keep your men right here in camp. My name's Ben Cartwright, Mr. Logan. My hands have come a long way with that herd, Mr. Logan. Then tidal to ease up a little. I won't stop him from going into town. There's a deadline on Front Street. Any of your hands go above it, I'll run them in for disturbing the peace. If they resist, I'll kill them. Good day, sir. Mr. Logan? Enforcing the law is one thing. Killing a man's another. You kill any of my men, I'll come after you myself. Mister, you've been fairly warned. Johnny? You made a mistake, mister. The name is Sam. Sam Jackson. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I made a mistake. I thought you were somebody I once knew. A long time ago. There's nothing like meeting old friends again, huh, kid? Changed my mind, Mr. Cartwright. I'd like some of my pay. Are you going into town after all? I'm going into town. This is it, Mr. Cartwright. What happens if we go beyond this point? What stops us? Two barrels a buck. <laughs> I guess this is as far as we go, boys. What kind of an outfit are you running, Captain? Letting a town constable push you around. Well, Brazos, I should have known you'd be along. You know my foreman? I know him. Don't pay any attention to this tin star. Don't mean a thing. Why? Go for your gun, Logan. I won't wait. Put down that gun. 
Put it down! There'll be no killing. We'll obey the law. The first one that starts anything will answer to me. That holds for you, Sheriff. You'll answer to me for any brutality to my crew. Just see that they obey the law. All right, man, the town's yours. That part of it. You heard the man. Sam, I want to talk to you. Why'd you throw in with process like that? He's riding trail with us, ain't he? Isn't that carrying loyalty to your outfit a little too far? What have you got against Sheriff Logan? Mr. Cartwright, I just don't know what you're talking about. Don't play cozy with me, boy. You answer my question. He's my pa. Your pa? You're gonna throw down on your own father? That's right. And just as soon as I get the chance, I'm gonna kill him. Badstone is going to come in here and tell me how to run that business. You're a tin horn cheat, and you'll do exactly as I tell you. I'll close up the street. I'll pass that around. Hostile, ain't he? He's ruined this town. You give $100 to be rid of him. If I were you, I wouldn't make that kind of an offer. Somebody will have to take you up on it. So, don't play engine with me, boy. I can tell just looking at you what you're thinking. Want to meet her? Don't do me any favors, Brussels. I owe you a favor for siding me out on the street. Come on. Sam, meet Melinda Bowers. Melinda, meet Sam. He's all right. Well, I'd just love it if your friend would sit down by me a bottle of wine, Brussels. We could talk, get to know each other better. Well, sure could. Sam, buy the little lady a bottle of wine. I'd be real pleased, Miss Melinda. I'll order it for you. Slogan? Well, what can I do for you two gentlemen? Mr. Logan, either my son or I would like to accompany you on your rounds. Oh? What good would that do? Well, you said you didn't want to. See any trouble on the part of my crew? Thought we'd like to prevent that trouble before any of it ever gets started. And you think that your talk would be more effective than my scattergun? Well, they're my crew. Mr. Cartwright, how many trail drives have you made up from Texas? I've made my share. Mr. Cartwright, I drove a half a dozen herds before I turned peace officer. I didn't have any more control over my trail gangs than you do. I'm aware of the problems, Mr. Logan. Mr. Cartwright, you've got the scum of the border driving your herds. You're completely at their mercy. Now, you tromp on them hard enough to keep them in line, they'll quit you. Leaving you with two, three thousand head, 900 miles from a market. You can't afford that. They're my cattle. Let me worry about them. I'm not talking about cattle. I'm talking about some crazy, boozed up trail hand. Thinks it might be fun to blow out all the glass windows on Main Street. Well, if he tries it, I'm going to have to stop him. And if I have to kill him, I'll do that, too. Don't you think that's a mite unreasonable? Either of you men ever see a town get treed? No, sir, I can't say it will have. 
Must be quite a sight. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a sight. Property smashed. Men beaten up for no reason at all except some drunken cowboy feels like it. Buildings set on fire. And the women. Oh, the women. A lot of broken, weeping women left in a town after it's been treed by a trail gang. I've heard of things like that happening. You've heard of it? Well, I've seen it right here less than two years ago. And your foreman, Mr. Cartwright, a fellow they called Brazos, he was in on that fandango. It was all over with. I tied him to the tail of a wagon and black snaked him out of town. Now he's come back, looking for more trouble. What about your son? Did you black snake him out of town, too? You know about that. I know about it. My son's pushing to get himself killed. I don't want to oblige him. Well, now it's started. What are you waiting for? and baddest thing I've run into in my life. Why, a man could die downright happy just after shaking the hand of a mean killer like you. Oh, shake my hand? Yeah, all? Ain't gonna kill you? Why, sure, I tell you. It'd be an honor and a privilege getting killed by a bad man like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think tonight's a real good night for killing you. Hmm. You old friend. How can I ever think of killing an old friend like you? <laughs> <laughs> Take him down to the livery stable and let him sleep it off, Paul. Good idea. <laughs> Can't you find anything better to do than sit in a saloon? I'll see you later. You two boys know each other? We met. Now, what do you think you're up to, boy? I don't see as how that's any of your business, Mr. Cartwright. You signed on as one of my trail gang. Getting those cattle back to Nevada is my business. You stay away from Logan. Hey, keep this gentleman here for a while. What was that all about? Why don't I just buy you another bottle of wine, Miss Melinda? Some other time. I'm through work now. I'm going home. I'll walk you home. Well, what about that fellow you work for? You heard what he said. He didn't say anything about not taking you home. Been a long time since anybody worried about me getting home. I'll get my key. Oh, pretty good, ain't you, kid? You gonna take her home? Yeah. She lives across the deadline. You know what that means, don't you? I said I was taking the lady home. You ready? I'm ready. Something on your mind, cowboy? I was wondering about you. 
Your face don't match the way you talk. And sometimes your talk don't match. Well, the things you do. Well, I'm sorry I don't have time to explain it to you. This is far as you go. That's Sheriff Logan's deadline. Warn it. Trail hands forbidden beyond this point. You read good. That means you. I don't care about that tin horn, Sheriff. I'm walking you home. All right. We don't have far to go. I live right around the corner at the hotel. Miss Bowers. Why don't you call me Melinda? Other cowboys do. Well, there's something I'd kind of like to ask you. I'll bet a pretty it's going to be, how did I ever get into this life? I didn't mean to pry. No, it's all right. I'm used to it. What I meant was, well, you ain't always worked at Jake Rudabaugh's saloon, have you? Ever since those men on that trail gang, I did. What trail gang? What men are you talking about? Just a bunch of fellas having a good time, at least to start with. Men like yourself and Brazos and the rest of you. There was one I liked a lot. Had more fun I ever had in my whole life. But then they went wild and hoorahed the town. By the time John Logan organized things and cleaned them out, well, the decent folks just wouldn't give a job to anybody. It had anything to do with the trail gang. So there was nothing left for me to do but go to Rudabaugh's saloon. Sounds to me like all you was doing is having a little fun. Try and tell that to the good people of Waycross. Good night, kid. Good night, Melinda. Well, there's a lot more to being a peace officer than just busting up fights. Now, when there's a trail gang in town, I make the rounds all night long. Never try to walk the same route twice. You might run into some... Evening, Hoss. What are you doing here? You're over the deadline. I can't see as I'm doing any harm. No, you never did any harm, did you? Well, I'm taking you in. Mr. Logan, you ain't taking me in. I told you a long time ago, you ain't never taking me in again. And don't you even try! Thanks. Help me take him in. to take responsibility for him, they can bail him out in the morning. Sam, I'm sorry to see you get yourself into this trouble. I reckon you kind of brought it on yourself going across that deadline, though. If it wasn't this, it'd have been something else. He's out to get me, is all it is. He always has been. Oh, Sam, I, I can't believe that. What do you know about it? You want to know what kind of a father he is? He sent me to prison when I was just a kid. Prison? What'd you do to go to prison? Nothing. Not a thing. I was running around with some fellas. Brazos was one of them. They hoorahed a town one night, just letting off some steam. And some woman got hit by a stray bullet. Could have been anybody's bullet. But I spent a year in jail because my pa wanted to show the world how tough he was. Sam, did, did you ever think that maybe he did that to save you some bigger trouble later on? Yeah, I thought about it. I thought about it plenty. All the time I was locked up, I thought about how I was going to get back at him for what he'd done to me. Boy, you, you can't carry that with you the rest of your life. Oh, I don't intend to. I'm gonna kill him.
my man in here. I want him. Cost $25. until you're well out of town. Wait for me outside, Sam. I told you not to lean too hard on my men. And I told you what the limits were and what would happen if your men set foot over that line. The boy was doing no harm. He broke an ordinance. Whose ordinance? The town's or your own little ordinance? I can appreciate a hard man doing a hard job the hard way. I can understand, I can like a tough man, but I can't understand and I cannot like a man who would do a thing like this to his own son. I never let personal considerations interfere with the law. Is that why your son was so willing to kill you when you placed him under arrest? Mr. Cartwright, that's none of your business. <laughs> Now, see here, John. Let's talk this over like sensible men. The town is losing money. Judge Armbrist is right, Logan. It isn't just this crew we'll lose money on, but all the other crews coming up the trail behind them. If they find out the town's closed, they'll avoid us like the seven-year itch. This town used to collect six, seven hundred dollars in fines alone from trail hands. Almost enough to pay your year's salary, John. Seventy-five percent of that money went right into your pocket, Judge. Your court clerk got the rest of it. Ah, uh, now, look here. You care nothing. When you brought me here, you brought me here to clean up this town. There's only one way to do it. Let's keep it closed. Closed tight. There'll be no compromise while I'm sheriff. Well, maybe you won't be sheriff much longer. All right, do it your way for a while. When you're sick of it, let me know. I'll be here waiting. A good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Hallelujah, but that cut on your face. Hallelujah. Take a look at this, please. You hear the owl, seen the elephant, huh? Sit down there on that stool and let me have a look at that face. It's fine. That horse got a real professional touch when it comes to buffalo. Yes, sir. That boy learned how to take care of his little brother. Seems those two never go to town on Saturday night. Horse don't come home carrying little Joe across the saddle. Bet he saved his skin a hundred times or more, just trying to keep him out of trouble. He didn't keep me out of trouble. And when the way it was told to me, that don't amount to much. Slow down your eating for a couple of days. Don't spoil your appetite. What happened, Johnny? It's like I told you, man, I'll not try to do a job alone. I'll get to Logan yet. Sure, Johnny. But now we'll do it my way. Now, Logan's plum ticklies about that town of his. If we were to ride in there and start taking it apart... I told you before, this is something between him and me, personal. But you wouldn't object to me and the boys flushing him out into the open for you, would you? Rosos? Yes, sir. I said we'd do it my way, Johnny. Yes, sir. The browsers have decided to pull out first thing tomorrow morning. Was that right, Captain? No. Well, in that case, I better try to get the boys back from town early. Nobody goes to town. You've had your fun. Go back into town, it'll mean trouble. Well, that's right, Captain. Uh, but if you try to stop me and my boys from going back, that's going to cause trouble, too. Unless you figure that it's no trouble for you and that boy of yours. 
and that stove-up cook of yours to drive this herd to Nevada all by yourselves. You're threatening me, Brazos. Oh, now, now, Captain, don't get sudden. There's no call for it. No call for it at all. It's just that I've got a personal interest in Sheriff Logan and that town of his. No man black snakes me and gets away with it. I'm not interested in your personal grudges. Well, you ain't, Captain. Well, you should be. The rest of these boys, they're interested in my personal grudges, ain't you, boys? I guess I should have told you at the start of this drive, Captain. These boys do what I say, not what you say. your war bag and get. The rest of you settle down. You hide on his trail hands and by thunder you'll finish this job. You're gonna have to back that up, Captain. All right, boys. Tell him to put his gun away. But you, Johnny, you coming along? You kind of wanted to pay your paw another visit, didn't you? Stay out of this, Sam. I don't reckon I can stay out of this, Mr. Cartwright. I got a personal grudge, too, that ain't finished yet. How about you, Cookie? I'm sticking with the captain. Well, suit yourself and get over here. All right, you two. Take their guns and keep your eyes on them. I don't want anybody spoiling our fun. Come on, boys. Boys, we're right glad to see you. After last night, we wanted a chance to show you just how sorry we were for what happened. Judge John Brewster, tell these men what we decided on for today. Well, we want to see you boys enjoy yourself. Spend your money in our stores. We've lifted Sheriff Logan's deadline, and our merchants are staying up late in order to serve you. The town is yours. Well, ain't that nice. Boys, ain't that the nicest thing you ever heard in your lives? <laughs> Tell you what, Judge. Maybe you can get Sheriff Logan to come down and have a drink with us. Socialize a little. Well, I'm afraid, sir, I have no control over Sheriff Logan's movements. What kind of a judge do you call that? Boys, I just elected a new judge, namely me. Yeah, here, sir. You're in contempt of court, mister. Show the man how we treat contempt of court. Oh, oh Judge, meet the boy. Gentlemen, please, please. Get back in there. Not that. Oh, Join yourself with nothing. Come on, come around, man. Take it easy. <laughs> Boys, the drinks are on the house. They're all free. <laughs> Buying drinks for everybody in town, don't you reckon, Hallelujah? Yeah, <laughs> buying them or stealing them. Anyway, he's getting them. <laughs> hallelujah. You still got that, uh, that bottle of whiskey back there? Sure have, Captain. We ain't had many snake bites this trip. <laughs> well, you fellas care for a swallow? Oh, I'll know better than to ask you. Now, let me see. Where did I hide that the last time? Oh, you're always getting. Yeah. 
It ought to be here somewhere, Ed, right next to the beans. Find it yet? Not yet. I'll find her. She's around here somewhere. Let's see, I had her right behind the flower night before last. I'll find her. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. I know it was there somewhere. <laughs> Ain't much left in it there. Be here, Captain. Yeah. Whiskey in the bottle, did you? Yeah, well, I'll give you back a full bottle of whiskey from town. Hey, look out for things. What's he waiting for? He'll make his play when he's ready. Why wait on him? Let's go in after him now. You hurry, we got plenty of time. The boys ain't hardly liquored up enough yet. Hey, boys! Come on, there's plenty more free liquor in the Satisfied, Mr. Cartwright? Did you take a good look at what can happen to a town? You were right, Sheriff. We couldn't control them. And you can't control them now. It's just gonna have to run its course. Mr. Logan, you got a job to do, and you're getting paid to do it. Paid to do it? The good citizens of this town told me not to interfere with their money-making enterprises. Well, it's those enterprises that pay my salary. I was reminded of that. You mean you're, you're not gonna do anything to... To stop them out there? I am going to sit right here until I get orders from the people who pay me. Since when do you wait for orders? Uh, what's your real reason, Logan? What do you mean? Your son is out there with that gang. Could that have anything to do with your decision to stay here inside? Ashamed of Logan. Being a father? What do you want me to do? Go out there and kill my boy. <laughs> Buy a bottle of wine, kid. I owe you one. What are you doing here? You think of a better place? After all that's happened, I didn't think you'd come back. Why? Just another trail gang to me. It's happened before and it'll happen again. It's always the same. You don't think things can change? Sure, they can change. Enough people decide to back up Sheriff Logan. Well, I wouldn't count on him for anything. Then you don't know him very well. No, no. He's my father. Your father? That's right. And I'm here to kill him. Hey, 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 hey. Hi, Sam. Linda, what did I tell you? He's a pretty good boy, ain't he? Yeah. He's the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. What's the matter with her? Nothing. Ain't it time yet? 
Yeah. It's time. Come on, boys, let's go! I've been waiting for this for a long time, Mr. Logan. Make your move. Go! All right, boy. Get it over with. Are you stupid kid? Shoot! Why are you yelling? No good. Look out, Logan! Ah! It's your father, boy. Gonna help him? Are, are you all right? Sure, son. All right, men. We still got a bunch of cows to drive to Nevada. 